clicking on this video. I appreciate your time very much and your interest in the subject matter du jour. Today I want to talk to you about seaweed. More specifically, a deep dive into the right timing for seaweed application on our orchids. And I'll be covering the subject for indoor growers, outdoor growers. When I say indoor growing, I mean artificial lights. Everything is nicely controlled, including greenhouses. Dormant orchids, mounted orchids. And I really hope that you will find little nuggets of information that will help you and your orchids have a fabulous growing season or, depending on the hemisphere, get through that season into spring with your orchids thriving and doing well. If you're not new to growing orchids, you already know that kelp or seaweed extract is an excellent organic stimulant for plant growth. It is not to be considered a fertilizer, but a rich source of growth hormones, especially for root growth. And as we know, an increased root mass means better moisture and nutrient uptake, leading to more foliage, flowers and resistance to stress. If you're new to the orchid hobby, then this could be of great interest to you, especially as we're going to go into details as to the application and the timing of said application. Now, I just want to make a bit of a distinction here. The product I use, I am not affiliated with. I don't get anything out of it. It's just a product I've been using for years. And then let's talk about when we hear about kelp extract versus seaweed extract. Is there any difference? The main thing about this is never forget that the seaweed, whatever it is that you're using, it is not a fertilizer. It is a supplement. And in my channel, I make a very clear distinction between the use and application of the two. Fertilizer is one thing, supplements are a completely different thing, and seaweed or kelp extract is a supplement. Seaweed is a general term to describe any marine-based plant and algae. And when we see kelp being used as part of the label or the product, it just boils down to the fact that they use kelp in the name as it is more specific and is the largest subgroup of seaweed. When made into a product for supplementing plant growth, kelp from different waters vary in quality and its effects. One of the best types of kelp is Eclonia maxima, which grows in large underwater forests off the coast of South Africa. The jury is still out on which kelp is the best. I may be a little bit biased. Coming from the continent of Africa myself, I consider Eclonia maxima the best type simply for that reason. I do not have any other scientific background to base that reasoning on. It's a simple bias of mine. Others would consider that the kelp off the coast of California, specifically around Monterey, would be the better quality. Either way, kelp does the same thing no matter where it comes from. And kelp is not exclusive to seaweed extract. Please don't think that you need to have a specific kelp for your seaweed extract. Please also don't think that you need to see Eclonia maxima or any kind of kelp species on the bottle in the list of ingredients. It may just say kelp and that is absolutely fine for the orchids. It may not even say kelp. Know that seaweed, either way, is great for the orchids and the hormones that we will get into will do their job effectively. You need to take away from this that when people talk about kelp fertilizer and seaweed fertilizer, most people use the term synonymously. But strictly speaking, kelp or seaweed extract is not a fertilizer, but a potion of growth hormones. So if you're going to the shelves and having a look to see what kind of seaweed extract or kelp extract you have available, if not locally, then online, just make sure that you're looking for pure kelp and seaweed extracts without any kinds of other additives. We're trying to target the orchids with seaweed without getting them confused with other additives. The seaweed itself has plenty, plenty of what we need. Any kind of additives when it comes to orchids, we'd like to keep it as clean as possible when we are supplementing and we don't want to be mixing things together. So just look for pure kelp or seaweed extracts in general. For the most part, these products are balanced out equally. There's also discussion of a high ratio of auxin to cytokinin. The hormones in the seaweed will do their job and the micronutrients are just a bonus that come along for the ride being part of the seaweed's makeup. It is widely known and accepted that there are major benefits of using seaweed 
for our orchids because it is an excellent supplement for all plant growth. It produces thicker and healthier roots, robust new root growth and lateral growth on old roots, branching, and especially on rootless orchid, it triggers root growth. Having additional roots, a more active root system increases the plant size, the nutrient uptake that results in resistance against some diseases, more tolerant to temperature changes, adapting to drought and waterlogged situation in a more favorable way. In some cases, also more flower spikes, better flower quality and color, and stronger flower fragrance has also been attributed to the use of seaweed. Personally, I cannot vouch for that because when my blooms bloom and they are fragrant, they are highly fragrant because they are older orchids or they don't have a fragrance yet because they're young orchids. So I wouldn't put too much weight on the fact that the flowers are stronger in fragrance, but it is out there as part of the information. I just want to make sure that when we speak of things like that, it's not as a general rule. There are very, very many exceptions in the orchid hobby. I would be very, very careful to go with information like that without putting a little bit of a disclaimer on it. Better flower quality and color can also be disputed because the flower quality and color is different from a first time bloomer to one that is maybe three to four years old. So all these things that are so generalized when it comes to seaweed, I would take with a pinch of salt. But when it comes to robust new root growth, branching of roots, thicker and healthier roots, I can vouch for that because I've seen it myself in my collection. So how does kelp or seaweed do that? So here's the science behind it, just really briefly. Kelp or seaweed is rich in plant hormones, especially auxins, cytokinins, and gibberellins, and beneficial micronutrients. You see, auxins and cytokinins are actually produced by all plants in their natural growth. Our orchids have them. When we see new growth grow at the growing tip, that is the plant pushing the plant hormone auxin straight into that area to stimulate that growth more. So you can see how the hormone is already existing in the orchid and seaweed applications would boost that hormone to support the plant in doing what it's actually doing. When it comes to root growth, the root tips would subsequently produce cytokinin, which would travel up to trigger new growth to promote cell division and it is a natural back and forth cycle when we apply the plant hormones that are in the seaweed it would boost one of the processes in turn boost the other and resulting in overall increases in plant growth again all relative when it comes to orchids increases in plant growth there's a limit to how big our orchids can get in a healthy way but if we apply a booster of auxin and cytokinin, we are supporting the hormones that are already existing in the orchid. The activity of what the orchid is doing is being supported by the additional seaweed. So we're actually not overriding anything that the orchid is doing when we apply seaweed. We're adding to the effectiveness of what it's doing on its own by providing a little bit more. Now we talked about gibberellin just briefly, but it also serves an important role in stem elongation, leaf expansion, and flower development development. So let's break this down. Kelp or seaweed extract that is rich in auxin is basically a rooting hormone or stimulator. So how do we get this good stuff into our orchids? Seeing as what we're doing is applying plant hormones to our orchids, some precautions must be taken in the application. I will always recommend to use anything the manufacturer has on the label. But as a general rule, we can apply kelp or seaweed extract once a month as part of the fertilization routine. But once again, it is not the fertilizer. But we can do this because the cycle of root and new growth subsides to normal levels in about three weeks after the application of hormones. Let me just put in here that if we do not apply seaweed or kelp extract, the orchid will still grow its new growths because the hormones are doing what they're doing. It's not as if the orchid is not going to grow its normal growth cycle if we don't apply kelp or seaweed extract. Remember, this is a booster. So after three weeks of the application, let's say the once month application, we can repeat the application for the following months, but be careful not to overdose the seaweed extract. The metabolism of orchids is super slow and only a small amount of auxin is needed to initiate any form of growth. As a general rule, the recommended dosage is one tablespoon per gallon of water, which is about 10 liters. And that is what I apply with my seaweed. But please, please check your manufacturer's instructions. And if you are in doubt, opt 
or half of what the manufacturer suggests, just so that you don't go overboard because sometimes we love too much on our orchids and we can cause problems because an overdose of these hormones can lead to deformed flowers, stunted growth, or even death. I know that sounds very radical, but I have to put it out there. It's very, very rare because by the time we see stunted growth, deformed flowers, we're already trying to figure out what we're doing wrong. So very rarely do we get to the point of continuing what we're doing to the death of the orchid because of seaweed. But as a disclaimer, I had to put it out there. So having said all that, when is it go time with seaweed application? I mean, we just spoke about overdosing could be detrimental to the health of the orchid, but do we do this all year round or... Well, let's, let's get into that. Let's go as a general and when we look at our collection without having to consider every orchid's individual status. The best time to really start with any kind of hormonal boost application would be spring. The longer days will trigger the auxin hormone to start swelling new points of growth. The eyes will start to bulge up and or the cytokinins take after root growth to prepare the orchid for active growth and optimal nutrient uptake. So when I say spring, as a general great starting point to start the first application of seaweed or kelp extract. Remember that orchids have a slow metabolism. Even if the weather has not warmed up yet to match what spring should be about, we can actually start applying seaweed a month in advance so that when temperatures match the season, the initial application will have already started supporting the orchid's natural cycle. And this gives us a head start. We are proactive instead of reactive. Personally, I started my seaweed application back in February even though the weather outlook for March was diabolical and not the norm for my climate at all. Still, for me, it was getting the hormone boost into the orchids ahead of time, and it helps them with what they are getting ready to do anyway. And if you're growing in a controlled environment, temperature, artificial lights, etc., if all of that is under control, including greenhouses, then you might be starting to increase the length of time your lights are on to simulate what is happening in nature. The same principle applies, and starting with seaweed a month earlier would give the same boost. And seeing as best practice is to apply once a month, there is no risk of overdosing on the product unless you don't follow the manufacturer's label. And once again, if you're in doubt, go buy half the amount. Orchids that are growing in the great outdoors all year round, but are in climates where winter temperatures provide a chill, may still appear to be dormant. So take that into consideration as well. But their hormones are responding to longer days and are not exempt from getting a seaweed treat sooner, as in a month before we can visibly see any activity. Because by the time we see something, the hormones have already been working away in the background and a little boost before our eyes can see anything waking up strengthens the inner clock of the orchid and signals that it is well and truly go time. So as mentioned, I have started with seaweed and orchids that were in self-watering. Their reservoirs were emptied of plain RO water and a seaweed solution went in. Okay, granted, the absorption rate of the reservoir isn't fast at this point and definitely not filled to capacity, but it now has seaweed in it for a couple of weeks, after which it will be filled with fertilizer based on activity of the orchid. For the mounts, I have been misting them with seaweed once a week at a quarter strength of the manufacturer's instructions, seeing as there isn't much going on, but in my dry climate, my outdoor orchids that are supposedly dormant need to have dew simulation. And in February, that is what they got. I stopped doing that seaweed application in March because the air was so wet. I did not have to simulate you. My normal seaweed application with the outdoor orchids that are waking up and coming out of dormancy will resume come April. Again, only because I've had so much wet weather throughout the month of March, I don't have to simulate dew. If you've got a very dry climate and then your orchid is waking up, a little bit of dew simulation is necessary. And why not add a very, very weak solution of seaweed into the mix to support what the hormones are already doing, even though we cannot see it with our naked eye. My semi hydropots got their reservoirs filled in February. Once again, as temperatures were still quite low, 
those orchids that are not yet in active growth then just got a flush of clean RO water when it was time to do so. So when it comes to the application, when I said I fill the reservoir, be it self-watering or in semi-hydro, or I missed my mounts, the option of foliar application spraying the orchids is also a popular thing to do. Just know that it is important when it comes to humidity levels in your climate. You need a lot of airflow, but you need a lot of humidity. If your foliar spraying on a windy day and the air is dry, it's going to do absolutely nothing because everything is going to evaporate before it even has time to absorb. If you're foliar spraying on a very humid day and there's hardly any airflow, it could be a detriment to the orchids and induce rot. Kelp and seaweed extract are organic products and yes, they will attract bacteria. So be very mindful of foliar applications. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm not saying it's not effective. I'm just saying the when of foliar applications is important and the conditions have to be right for it to be effective. Personally, I prefer watering with seaweed. At least this way, I know that the evaporation is not gonna go so quickly that the roots don't have time to take up any of the product. Now, when it comes for those of you heading into fall and winter, or eventually us in the Northern Hemisphere, when it comes time to head into fall and winter, the seaweed application should start to be reduced on an orchid to orchid basis. If in active growth, keep up with the regimen. If blooming is over and the orchid is not already starting new growths, as can be the case in hybrids, reduce the seaweed. So remember again, active growth means hormones are being pumped to growing points and and seaweed is the booster. If your orchid is not in active growth or not actively producing roots, there is no need for seaweed. The hormones can also confuse the inner clock of the orchid and then the temperatures aren't matching or the day lengths aren't matching. And that includes indoor growers because some indoor growers grow species that need a cool down. And also when we get to the deciduous orchids, same thing, whether you're growing indoors or outdoors. If the orchid is not in active growth, the timing of the year is not right, there is no need to be boosting with hormones. Heading into fall winter will actually trigger some orchids that start to respond to cooler temperatures. Those need to be supported and seaweed application can either continue or get started seeing as during the warmer months of the year, those orchids would not have any active growth. They are biding their time until the temperatures cool down and the conditions are more to their liking. For those cooler growing orchids that start to get active, seaweed application all the way. When it comes to the deciduous orchids, as we head into fall or winter, stop any seaweed application one month prior to them showing signs of dropping their leaves. Just like with heading into spring, we can start the hormone boost one month earlier orchids going dormant and we see the leaves turn yellow. Again, the hormones start their thing way sooner and only once they have taken effect do we see the result of their activity. Behind the scenes, so to speak, what the orchid does naturally and us applying seaweed would be not only a waste of product but can be considered an overdose with possible adverse consequences to the health of the orchid heading into dormancy. Use seaweed for your orchids. Consider the time of year. Don't wait until the temperatures are warm enough. Remember that the orchid has a very, very slow metabolism and starting four weeks early, preempting all the activity that's about to burst into life is a good thing because we are signaling to our orchids that it is an actual fact go time and boosting the hormones that they're gonna produce naturally anyway by adding a little bit of seaweed. Same thing as we head into winter, back off a month earlier because the hormones are already doing their thing. The orchid is heading into dormancy. And by the time that we see the leaves turning yellow and back off, we keep giving them hormones. There is absolutely no need for that. When it comes to hybrids and all the indoor growing that is more controlled environment, just keep an eye on your orchids on an individual basis. And if they're not in active growth or not actively growing any roots, then back off on the seaweed entirely because they need their rest too. A controlled environment, it is always very tempting to to keep the lights on to keep it nice and toasty and get the orchids to grow continuously for most hybrids that is a good thing that is why they were bred the way they were keep growing keep blooming but for the species that is not a good thing they still need their downtime and when orchids have their downtime the hormones also have their downtime and us applying seaweed 
is counterproductive. If you have any questions with what I've just said, the comments are there for a reason. I welcome the dialogue. Take advantage of them and let's keep talking. In the meantime, I thank you very, very much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful to clear up the when, the why, and the how. Whichever season you are heading in, I really hope that your orchids are doing well. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day. On one condition though, that you do stay safe. I would love to see you in the next video. Take care, bye.